Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to do a complete disassembly on this, which is a Dell 5300 2-in-1. And uh, you might ask why we're going to do that. Well, that's because the trackpad, mouse pad, whatever you want to call it, is dead. We have uh, updated the BIOS. We've done all of the usual things to make sure this thing is actually a physically dead trackpad, and it is. Uh, one of the ways you can tell is if you go into the BIOS and the mouse doesn't work, yeah, it's not a driver issue, it's not an operating system issue, because that's not what you're <laughs> controlling that at that point. So what we have to do is pull everything out of the uh, chassis uh, to replace it because this top half of the laptop is called the palm rest. And the palm rest is what ships with the trackpad. It's integrated, so you can't just change part of it, uh, which sucks because there's a lot of parts in here. Now, uh, we've done this before. It's challenging, yes, but it's quite doable. It's not rocket science, and we're going to do it with you so you can you can see how you know straightforward it actually is. Now, uh, the, the question you might have is, okay, so I've got a problem with mine, and I need to replace the keyboard on my Dell 5300 2-in-1, or I need to replace the palm rest or whatever. You need to do a complete disassembly to, to, to get to it. So where do I get the parts? Uh, well, this we sourced from our good friends at Parts People. And I say our good friends, no relationship to them at all. Never dealt with them before. Uh, but I can tell you, uh, and this is completely unsponsored. So if you find this useful, the big thumbs up would be certainly appreciated. Uh, so we went to partspeople.com. We paid a whopping $30 for this, uh, which was pretty good. Uh, then we paid $55 to get it shipped to Canada. And you might ask why we paid so much for shipping. Well, because we're international to the to the US, uh, this would have to cross the border. And if it crosses the border, it means customs and customs means brokerage fees. So if you ship overnight with FedEx, uh, the brokerage fees are included. If you ship ground with anybody, uh, you have to pay the brokerage fees which after all you're screwing around is going to be 30 to $40. Uh, so just pay for the overnight. Anyway, that's what we did. Now we had a few questions uh, and we dealt with parts people and they were really great with us. So uh, the first thing we did, for instance, was order the wrong part. Well, it wasn't so much the wrong part, we ordered the wrong shipping and they were great with, uh, with resolving it. They shipped this very quickly. Um, and so, um, so far we can recommend them. The part also looks great. And parts people, from what I can tell, only deal with uh, Dell. Again, we have nothing to do with them. I just thought you'd want to know that's where we got it from. So let's get to ripping this thing apart. Well, this thing apart and replacing the palm rest, which includes the trackpad. Unscrew. Battery next. One screw, two screws. Speakers, you can just pry the battery up. You don't need to actually unscrew it. You can just leave it. Let's take out the buttons. Pro tip, by the way, when you are taking parts like this apart, make sure you put the screws with the part you took out because otherwise when you're done, You've got a lot of parts that you just don't know where they came from. Lift this door to get the ribbon off. There it is for the card reader. Lift the door for the button ribbon. We've taken two screws out of here. Keep the two screws with the item you've taken out. Take the LED out. Continue with the speakers. Solid state drive. Solid state drive, card reader, which requires us to take the solid state drive mount out. So 
So one, two, three screws, plus the screw for the SSD mount. You can peel this thermal foil back. There you go. So it just slides out. Let's remove the fan. One, two screws, that's it. Always a good idea to blow this out while you have it out. Take out the heat pipe next, four screws. Charge port. Bracket out of there. Wi-Fi card. If you pull one of the antennas off, no problem. They just clip back on, but they are a pain. So I always try not to screw them up. Just loosen it up. There we go. Power bracket for the monitor. That just hooks in. Pull back the tape on the monitor cable. Slide it out. Pull this one straight up. Tape off the board. There we go. That should be loose now. Yes, it is. Good. Remove the monitor assembly by removing one, two, three, four screws. This one, two. Slide it back. This goes to the motherboard. There we go. That's that. Get rid of the monitor. Yes, you can leave the Wi Fi card on there. Motherboard screw. There's a magnet in there to uh, hold the lid down and it sucked up my screw. So be careful with that one. These two can come out oh, because the replacement unit comes with them. So boom, there's that, that out. I'm going to leave this connected. Pop that up. Slide that out. There we go. One motherboard. Yay. Ribbon, just pop that up. And the ribbon will slip out. Just lift this one up as well. Pop it out as well. One keyboard. While you're here, might as well bang it out. Get anything out of it. And let's get the power button out. I've taken this screw out already off camera because as soon as I popped it out, it got stuck on that magnet and took me like five minutes to get it off. So um, yeah, I've got the screw off now. So if you lose the screw, you haven't really lost it. It's just on top of that magnet. So how do you get this out? Carefully. There you go, twist it a bit, pop it out. You do not need to pull that screw out. That's for the Kensington lock. This is the part. Now, when you're buying this, one of the things to look for is whether it has a smart card reader or not. This unit would cost the same with the smart card reader or not, at least from uh, parts people. Uh, but I bought uh, one without it. Uh, because that's what was available. And the other thing, just as a visual cue to make sure you're getting the right one, check the shape of the enter key. There's a lot of different options for different countries and you wanna make sure that that enter key uh, matches up with your enter key and it does in this case. I checked this before I purchased it. Let's start rebuilding with the replacement part. Now just a short note before we go any further, you can take a look at how we have maintained uh, all of the parts in roughly the shape that they went in and the angles they went in so it's easier to assemble it's easier to remember what was where keyboard first something to note on the replacement part uh, is that there are little clips here so you're going to need to squish this in i don't know whether you can see them or not but trust me there are a few of them here so let's take the keyboard pull the ribbons back 
Put the keyboard in. Yep, just drops in because it's the right one. Everything's the right shape. Bingo. Sweet. Okay. Okay, let's put the power button back in now. Uh, pro tip, uh, put the screw in to the plastic holder first. Because if you don't, that magnet is going to rip it out and rip it out being it's going to come off of your screwdriver and you will not be able to put it in uh, because the magnet is just too powerful. So you have to slide it in on an angle, tuck it under the Kensington lock, pop it down, and then screw it in. There we go and pop that little plastic piece in as well. Let's slide it in from this side. You wanna clip everything down as soon as you can, because if you don't, you will forget about it and then something won't work. Now I'm pushing this down now because I've gotta get it to clip in. I just. I pointed it out earlier that these need to clip in, but it just wasn't doing it. Now, yeah, so I'm gonna have to just push it down now, which is not the best idea, but it's what I've got. Tuck the BIOS battery down into that gap in the rubber so it doesn't get pinched anywhere. Let's put the fan back on. And again, I've left the screws in so I know exactly which ones are which. Okay, now here's the tricky part. We should put more thermal grease on before we uh, replace the heat pipe, but I don't have any. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna kinda half-ass it. This thermal grease that's over top here, this old thermal grease isn't great, but it beats nothing. So I'm gonna scrape it off and squish it on. This is not a great solution at all, but it's better than having nothing uh, on there and this thermal grease will heat up and flatten out. So, power ribbon bracket, power charger, let's put the monitor assembly and the Wi-Fi card on next, put those brackets down. Now here's something I forgot, the uh, bracket for the LCD panel. So it goes in on a 45 degree angle and then it clips over. Now the bracket for the power plug goes in on a 45 and underneath, there it is, scoots in. SSD, but not the SSD itself, the SSD bracket. So that on there. Speakers next. Now, I see here I'm missing a little rubber gasket. Let's see where it went. Yeah, it's over here. Okay, so, oh, I've missed two of them. So, there's a little trick with these. Pop this rubber gasket off the old mount. Oops. Now it's simple enough to just put these on the post, but if you put it on the post, uh, they'll just get squished down. You don't do that. You put it on the speaker itself. Before you put the back on and screw it down, first thing to do is go check 
as many connectors as you can to make sure that there's something connected to them. Yep, there's only one stick of RAM. This looks fine. Yes, and also go down and retighten your screws. Just retorque them. You do not want to strip things, but you want to make sure they're tight. Okay, also make sure that none of the wires appear uh, as if they'll be pinched. Okay, now before you get all gung-ho and screw this down and say, yeah, I'm done, uh, pretty possible you've missed something, so I don't screw it down. Just leave the base off like that. Okay, so let's put some power on this. Bingo. The big Dell logo. Now as I'm sitting here, I can see that the keyboard's not been clicked down properly. So I'm going to use this screwdriver with some with a cloth to just get between the keys here and get this thing to snap into place. It should have been done when I had it apart. That's a mistake on my part. There we go. That's a clip. There. Yeah, it looks like I only missed one. Yeah, that's better now. All the keys are now sticking through nicely. So now I'm confident I can close the lid. Put the back on. So hey, if you found this video useful, please give us the big thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions or concerns, you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question or a comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will. Because on YouTube, everybody has an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.